On average, women take 20,000 breaths per day. And most of the time, this is completely unconsciously happening. We breathe without even thinking about it or being intentional with what we're actually doing. And there's a reason. We need to be able to go along our days and not have to think about every little thing that our body is naturally doing to keep us alive. And yet our breath is in fact one of the most powerful tools that we all obtain for our ultimate health and healing. And over the years... Various breath patterns have actually been studied to see what happens when we bring our focus to our breath and maybe even control it in certain different types of breathing patterns. And the results have been astounding. One particular style has been shown to deeply support the healing and renegotiation of trauma, re-regulation of our nervous system, and healing our physical bodies like no other. Conscious connected breathwork is an incredible modality that when done correctly can support our healing mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, in all facets of our holistic being. But what is this style of breathwork and how can this modality actually support us in healing our addictive patterns with food and sugar? And that is exactly what we're diving into in today's episode. Stay tuned for a deep dive into the world of conscious connected breath work and using this modality to heal our addiction with sugar. Now, before we go any further into today's episode, as always, a quick reminder, anyone out there who would love to support me and the show, the absolute best and biggest way that you can do that is by leaving a five-star review. Uh, please take a moment, write something, share with me your thoughts about the show, and help me reach even more women. The algorithm loves those reviews, and it really helps me make a bigger impact in the world and be motivated to continue bringing you more and more amazing episodes here on the podcast. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the Beyond Sugar Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Dame, holistic nutrition coach and speaker. Let's dive in. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode here on the Beyond Sugar Freedom podcast. I'm so excited for this episode because this is fresh in my mind, this deep, deep understanding of this relatively new in our minds <laughs> modality called Conscious Connected Breathwork. And for those who have been following me on Instagram or in my newsletter, my weekly newsletter, you know that I have just completed my training as a somatic breathwork facilitator just this last February. And I want to share with you a little bit of what I learned at my week-long training and really give you an, a lay of the land of what this style of breathwork modality is about, the technique, what it looks like, what to expect, and most importantly, how this can actually be used as a powerful tool in your journey with food and self. So I'm so excited to dive into this. I even actually have my, for those watching this on YouTube, my training manual right here next to me as I was making notes before this, this recording of, of what I want to share with all of you. Now, I want to just huge shout out to my teachers, uh, Damien and Sam at Soulful Somatic. Um, I'll make sure that they're linked in the show notes. You can check out everything that they are doing. They're incredible humans bringing a brand new training that ultimately blends the ideas and wisdom and teachings from somatic therapy or somatic experiencing with the healing modality of conscious connected breath work. Um, many conscious connected breath work practitioners do not have an understanding at the same level of trauma and nervous system repatterning as we do as when we learn about the ins and outs and the actual depths of uh, somatic uh, experiencing. So I'm really grateful to have been obtained this education and continuing to obtain this education. This is just the beginning for me. I am officially taking clients now and supporting at breathwork circles with my teachers. And it's been absolutely incredible. 
I still have a long way to go. There's a lot for me to practice, a lot for me to continue learning. And I'm, yeah, I'm so deeply excited to, to be doing that. So this is the inspiration for today's episode, coming fresh out of this training for myself and beginning to, over the last couple of months, have these conversations more with my clients who are in my program or my monthly membership community and beginning to even practice uh, in these communities, bringing this modality forward has been so powerful for my clients. And I want to introduce all of you to it as well. If this is something that is new, I know there are a lot of different styles of breath work, and I want to I want to preface this as well. There's a lot of different ways that we can use our breath to support our healing, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. But there is a very different in in intensive and different really intention that we have with conscious connected breath work specifically. And I'm going to explain this. So we're going to get into this in just a minute. But before we do, I wanted to share a couple of recaps with all of you from my incredible week long retreat. Um, and I love the way that this training is hosted as it is done in a retreat type setting where we live together and this beautiful mansion on the ocean outside of Vancouver, BC here, that is so conducive to not only our own healing, but the ability for us to really disconnect from life and come together with the purpose of learning and growing and healing and building these, these, this community. You know, I am, I am for myself building this deep community of other practitioners and other people doing similar work to me here in BC. And it just means the world to me to, to be able to support each other and to share ideas and to, um, to brainstorm together. And I think that's a really important part of any of our journeys. And I'm sure you can see the parallel there with, you know, with giving up sugar, right. And, and getting off the sugar roller coaster, how important it is to, to have that sense of community and have those people in your corner that you can bounce ideas off of and connect with who understand what you're going through. So this is a powerful, uh, powerful experience when we gather this way in person. And I just want to give a quick uh, shout out to this being the actual location that I rent for my retreat. So if you haven't heard yet, the second annual Sugar Freedom Embodiment Retreat is happening this June at this amazing oceanfront property where we are going to come together to not only detox from sugar and nourish our bodies, but also nourish our minds and do the deep root cause healing that is necessary for us on our journeys to actually creating a peaceful relationship with food and with ourselves. And this breath work is going to be a big part of that retreat. I actually hire my teachers, Damien and Sam, to come in and host a group journey for all of us. And this year I will be co-facilitating with them, uh, which is pretty exciting. So I'm so excited for this powerful workshop and this powerful experience for my clients. Last year at the retreat, the breath work journey was one of the highlights for many of the women who were there. And the profound healing that took place in that experience was just beyond words. So it's incredible. Being in person is incredible. Breath work is incredible. And I hope that any of you who are listening to this, who are ready to really take your healing with food and ultimately with yourself to the next level that you will consider joining us. There is still a few spots left and the early bird deadline to register for the upcoming retreat is April 1st. So don't wait, come and check everything out at danielledame.com slash retreat or in the show notes below. All right. So beyond my retreat, Let's dive in a little bit to some of the things that uh, I learned at my training and some of the things that I have absolutely touched on here on the podcast, but I wanted to add another layer to them today. So over the years, I have been learning myself about how trauma is ultimately at the root of all addiction. And I firmly believe this. I'm a big fan of Gabor Mate and the work that he's done in the addiction space, understanding that the inner turmoil and the disconnection from ourselves that start in childhood as actually the baseline for how we've developed coping mechanisms and numbing out patterns with food, alcohol, drugs, you name it. This is the root of addiction, the addictive patterns that live in our bodies that actually are not handed down genetically. They are handed down experientially through the household. If you were raised in a household with an alcoholic father who is abusive verbally or physically, those 
patterns are actually going to be stored in your nervous system. You're probably going to believe that you're worthless or that it's not okay to express emotions. It's not safe. And you're going to develop your own coping tools and mechanisms, which is most likely also going to be alcohol or food, right? This is how addiction gets handed down. And, and Gabor talks a lot about this. So I'm not going to go into depth in it. But I think it's important for all of us to understand that there is a major imprint in our nervous systems that is actually causing us to deeply need, quote, need, escape with food, to escape our bodies, to escape our emotions, to escape the inner turmoil that we are experiencing or have been experiencing most likely since childhood. Now, Crash course, for those who aren't familiar with the nervous system, is essentially our alarm system. It is one of the very first systems, energetic systems in our body. It's not just energetic. It's there's physical, actual nerves involved, right? Hence the nervous system that develops in the womb. And it is one of our most primitive, important systems to keep us alive. It is literally the system in our body that is tasked to keep us out of danger and alive if we're being chased by a lion, right? It's going to fire up and come online. So if we're ever in a dangerous situation or we are fearing for our lives um, or even feeling like we're experiencing neglect, right? This is also a source of trauma. These patterns get stored in our nervous system. And most of us, simply because of the world that we live in, simply because of the absence of knowledge around mental, emotional, and spiritual health that we have had over the last decades, if not millennia and centuries, most of us, 99% of humans, have a dysregulated or a nervous system that was wired incorrect from childhood. And there's a lot that we could go into in this. and We don't have time for it in this podcast. There's a lot to learn about the nervous system and how it actually imprints um, as early as in the womb. And especially in those first seven years of life, we are feelers. So literally the first years of life, those first couple of years of life, especially we don't have cognitive function, not in the way that we do as we grow up, right? Our first system that comes online is feeling, and that is the nervous system. It, it tells us, are we safe? Are we not safe, right? Are we in good hands? Are we going to survive, right? Is our mother feeding us, right? These are all uh, signals that get felt, not thought, so our body is actually the first system that comes online when we are born into this world as humans. And later, of course, we develop the ability to think and to speak um, and to kind of those, those faculties start to come online. But the imprint that we have from energetic experiences in those first few years of life actually gets stored in our body and create the thoughts and beliefs that we currently have about ourselves, about the world, about what it means to express emotions, about what it means to feel safe or even connect with our body. And many people will think of the nervous system and think of the stress response, right? Our nervous system gets activated when we are stressed, when we have a stress response. And the truth of the matter is in this day and age, we're no longer running away from lions, but maybe we're late with a deadline at work and our nervous system gets activated. So what is happening here is this system that manages our stress response, manages our safety, our, our drive for survival is being activated constantly. And at times when it shouldn't be, right? Or when it doesn't need to be, right? Your life is not in danger if you're late with a project at work, right? Your life is not in danger in many of these situations, but your nervous system thinks it is. And this is where the dysregulation can start showing up and can cart creating a life where you are feeling anxious and stressed and overwhelmed and conscious constantly in your head and frazzled. And there's a lot of conversations we can have around there, but I just want to really hit home that this is a major part of why you are being driven to eat sugar. Why are you being driven to give yourself a dopamine hit to avoid and escape the uncomfortable feelings of unsafety, <laughs> lack of safety in your body. Now, trauma and the nervous system go hand in hand. And I know, again, I've talked a lot about trauma on the podcast. I want to do way more episodes on trauma because I'm still learning a lot about it myself, how it applies to my own upbringing. But it is fascinating, you know, for anyone out there who's thinking, oh, I've, 
my upbringing was great. I don't have any trauma. I didn't get raised in a war-torn country or get raped or physically abused. And we often think of those as being the only sources of trauma. And again, the sad truth is that we live in a world where we all have trauma. We have all been traumatized. A small act of your classmates laughing at you as you're giving a class presentation in grade two is enough to imprint in your nervous system that you're not lovable, you are to be kept quiet. The imprints that happen, the embarrassment and the shame that gets stored in your body and in your system from that is a trauma. So there are a lot of these, what we would call little T traumas that most of us, myself included, are walking around with thinking that it's no big deal. When to your younger self, it was in fact life or death. Again, you don't have the understanding of the world in these younger years of life. You don't know that you're going to be okay or that you'll find other friends later, right? You don't know those. You think you're about to be kicked out of the tribe and probably die alone in the woods. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but this is ultimately how those primitive first parts of our brain as we're developing as children unfold. Now, I absolutely love Gabor Mate's definition of trauma. I want to share a couple different angles or avenues here as we talk about what is trauma. Uh, There's a lot of different definitions and there's a lot of different facets and arms of trauma. Gabor always mentions that trauma is not actually what happens to us. Often we think of it as being like an event, right? Whether it's a car accident or a physical abuse or emotional abuse, it's not what actually happens to us. That's not the trauma. The trauma is actually what happens inside of us as a result of what happens to us. So he talks at length, you can find beautiful YouTube videos about his definition of trauma, of how these experiences, whether we're say physically abused, right? It's the story and the energy that gets stored in our nervous system from that experience that is the actual trauma and is the actual healing that needs to happen. So we can't go back in time and and say not be abused, but we can go back in time and actually get what we needed in the aftermath of that abuse. And this is where we talk about renegotiating trauma and being able to actually get what you should have had, right? You should have had a mom who came in and protected you, right? You should have had um, somebody who stood up for you you know, these sorts of things. You should have had a hug, right? There's a lot of things that we should have had that we didn't get. And in that, our nervous system began to believe that it was alone and that it was unsafe. And it begins to find ways to cope, i.e. addictive patterns of numbing out and escaping, whether it's video games or sugar or alcohol or smoking, you name it. Now, another really powerful uh, way to, to view trauma here, and this is actually a big part of what we do in Conscious Connected Breathwork and what I learned at my training, is one of the things that happens when an event happens to us, for example, is that our natural nervous system response to follow through with a protective uh, action is usually robbed of us. So what this means is often in traumatic situations, um, we are in, unable to fight, flight, or freeze, right? So the fighting back, the fleeing the situation because it's dangerous, or freezing. These are the three um, major responses and actions that our nervous system will take to keep us alive. And for most of us in a traumatic traumatic situation, whether again, for example, say it's physical abuse, we don't get the opportunity to actually fight back. Perhaps we're not strong enough to stand up against this person that is abusing us, or we aren't able to flee, right? Maybe they have us like trapped in the house and we're not allowed to leave. So there's a very real um, response, safety protective response in our body that doesn't get to play out. And this this is stuck in our nervous systems. So this is actually an understanding that a lot of the trauma that's still stored in our body is the, in fact a lack of agency to be able to follow through with this natural protective response. And one of the cool things with conscious connected breath work, similar to psychedelic therapy and plant medicine work, is we can actually go in and re- live in a way, that pattern in a way that it got to play out. So we can we can actually play out that fight, that flight, that freeze response and complete what we call completing the loop, completing the trauma loop in terms of how we should have been able to protect ourselves. 
Now there's a lot there, but that is just a really, um, I find a really eye-opening and powerful understanding when we think back to our early childhood experiences and perhaps those situations where, again, we'll use a, a smaller example of you standing up, giving a presentation at in the front of your class and everyone starts laughing at you, right? And you feel like you can't escape, right? You're, you're not allowed to like run out in the hall. Your teacher's like just encouraging you to keep going. You feel like you have no choice to uh, other than to just stand there and take this embarrassment. And really what your system wants to do is probably run out in the hall, right? <laughs> and escape, get the heck out of that room because it feels so uh, harmful, right? And people are putting you down. So this gets stored. Another piece, the last thing I'll mention here, and then we're going to talk more specifically about breathwork, <laughs> but is really also understanding trauma isn't always what happened to you. It can actually just equally be an absence of what should have been present. So things like an absence of conditional love, an absence of emotional attunement. There's a lot of very basic energetic and emotional needs that children have that most of us never got. And it's not the fault of our parents. It's the fault of the world that we have been raised in not understanding the importance of these things. So please don't blame your parents. I definitely don't blame mine, but it's helpful to understand these energetic needs that have to be met in order for a child to fully feel safe, to fully feel safe to be themselves. They have to know that they're unconditionally loved, even if they do the wrong thing, even when they're not perfect, right? They need to feel that. Not just hear it, but feel it in the actions of their caregivers, right? They need to also know that their caregivers are in attuned with them. This is that energetic, emotional attunement where your mom knows when you're feeling sad, right? And these are things that many of us didn't get. There's a lot of other things, right, as well, th those needs, those, those psychological, emotional, energetic needs that often aren't met in childhood are not met fully. And that can be traumatizing as well in that it creates these imprints of I'm not okay to be myself. Um, it's not safe to be in my body. It's not okay to feel, right? There's a lot that we carry around even just expressing emotions because they weren't allowed in our household. So all of this gets imprinted deeply in us in our system so that we begin to learn to be a different version of ourselves, to forget who we authentically are, and to learn how to cope because there's this inner void and very uncomfortable sensations that we don't know what to do with. So there's a lot of layers here, a lot of layers, as you can tell. And this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and very deeply deeply honored to support my clients in navigating into these inner wounds, these younger selves, our inner child, you know, these areas that we need to address and we need to not only mentally understand maybe the situations that unfolded for us or understand why we do what we do, uh, which is one step. And I was actually chatting uh, with a potential client the other day and she was mentioning this as well of like, I understand where all of this came from but I don't know what to do with it or how to change it. And this is where we get into the body. Most of us understand cognitively what's going on, but the body is actually what's storing this memory, not your brain. And this is the deep importance of doing body-centered somatic work and, and breath work, in my opinion. So Let's talk about breathwork now. Let's talk specifically about conscious connected breathwork. What is it? Let's start there. What the heck is conscious connected breathwork? It sounds fancy. It is. And it can be really powerful um, and really beautiful because this is a modality that is free to access anytime. You can at any time learn this. I mean, I have my own breathwork practice that I do every morning now that I know this technique and I can support myself in continuing to regulate my nervous system. But essentially, the short version of a lot of long details is that conscious connected breath work is a breath pattern, and I'm going to explain what the pattern is later on, that actually supports us in dropping into a theta brainwave state, which is ultimately the brainwave state that we were at when we were in utero and when we were born as infants. This is the feeling, the sentient um, brainwave state where we get out of our conscious mind and actually into our unconscious state and into the body. So we drop out of the conscious mind and get into the wisdom of the body. And this breath pattern helps us do that. Uh, in a similar way as 
sometimes <laughs> can be psychedelic journeys. We can actually use the power of our breath to induce altered states of consciousness. We can get high on our own supply. It's pretty cool. And not just for fun, but actually for deep healing purposes when that is your intention going into this. Now, what this is not, this is a, a lot of misconceptions as I'm already starting to talk more about conscious connected breath work. Many people think, well, this is like really intense, rapid breathing or hyperventilating, or maybe they think this is like, oh, a yoga breath that I do at the end of a uh, yoga class. This is nothing like that. You are not meant to be hyperventilating or over oxygenating your blood. There's actually a very smooth rhythm and actually an almost effortless breath that we engage in to actually activate with a few specific uh, styles of what we're doing with our breath that actually help us induce this theta brainwave state and go into our subconscious, essentially. Like how cool we get to go into the basement of our mind, ramble around to see what's there and, and do some healing while we're there, right? Really ultimately healing ourselves from the inside out, which is pretty, pretty fantastic. So I've, I've already mentioned a few benefits, but I want to share here, you know, what can conscious connected breath work support you with? And, you know, ultimately the list is massive. I'm going to share a few things here, but we are still learning the power and the potential of using this modality to support our nervous system and healing. So some of the things that I have seen and personally experienced and have learned from my teachers is this type of breath work can really support with emotional repatterning and release. This is an area that I'm extremely fascinated with, knowing that most of my clients are emotional eaters, uh, struggle feeling emotions, are completely disconnected with their body. So breath work in this way is a powerful tool to help us tap back into even feeling our emotions, let alone learning how to process them and learning how to make peace with them. We can also, as I've mentioned a few times, get into trauma renegotiation. We can connect with our body in a new way. I know, again, many women that I work with are completely disconnected from their body and have no idea how to really tune into their intuition or their, their you know, physical bodies even and the sensations and messages that are there. Another really powerful uh, possibility with this breath work is connecting to spirit connecting to source. I mean, I've had many of these experiences in breath work and as well as psychedelic experiences where we can really deeply connect to the energy of oneness um, and, you know, things that are actually outside of our 3D reality. And when we're in this new subconscious brainwave state, we can actually implant new beliefs and we can actually start to implant uh, new views of ourselves based off of a new message that we're writing in our nervous system to override the old one that is not supporting us. We can connect to our authentic expression. This has been one of the biggest pieces for me. A few modalities that that I do help help me in this process of really discovering who I truly am, what I truly want, what I truly value, who I authentically am, and how I like to authentically express myself. We can regulate our nervous system. We've talked a lot about that. And learn how to speak our truth. A big part of conscious connected breath work is actually vocal activation. There's a massive part somatically when we get to activate our voice to break up the blockages in not only just our throat chakra, but in all areas of our life. When we tone and make, uh, make sound, we actually stimulate the vagus nerve, which is a really important part of our nervous system. So there's a lot to do with actually learning how to activate our voice. And I know personally that sometimes this can be really hard. And I know for a fact that many of you listening, because many of my clients really struggle with this. As women, we have major voice blockages and are unable to set boundaries, speak up for ourselves, ask for our needs, all these things. So the actual work that we can do in breath work can help us shift these, these old stuck patterns of, of, keeping our voice blocked and actually learn how to use our voice in our life, which is pretty amazing. And then of course, on top of that, there's all sorts of physical benefits that are still being studied. Things like lower blood pressure, better moods and mental stability, better focus and cog mental cognition, uh, reg blood sugar regulation, uh, healthier lungs, more energy, um, supporting the detoxification processes in your body breathing better. I mean, there's so much that happens when we actually start to get deep nourishing breaths. 
And uh, this is actually where I wanted to go next because the style of this breath is really eye-opening to when we start to practice this, we start to realize how few of us, how rarely we actually breathe into our diaphragm. And what I mean by this is belly breathing. Most of us do not. We live in an activated, dysregulated nervous system state, which naturally makes us want to breathe into our chest. So we're breathing up. We're breathing up into our chest and barely expanding or filling the capacity of our belly. Now, I also know hand in hand with women comes this natural, innate desire to constantly be sucking in our stomachs, right? We're always worried about our weight. We're worried about looking fat. We want to just suck it in. And we have this, thus taught ourselves, maybe since childhood, to breathe up in our chest into our rib cage as opposed to in our diaphragm. So actually learning this conscious connected breathwork pattern is a massive, even in itself, just to teach you how to breathe better. When we are relaxed, when our nervous system is regulated and we are feeling so at peace, we breathe in our diaphragm. And I encourage you to start paying attention to your breath throughout the day, noticing how shallow it is, noticing where it is. And most of you are going to notice it's mostly in your chest. So when we get into conscious connected breath work, the first thing that you want to do, technically speaking, is bringing your breath just into your belly. So we're taking the breath out of the chest and into the low diaphragm. So your low belly, like belly button and down, and even into your pelvic floor and your womb space, really deep into the lower portion of your belly. And we're beginning to expand and reach possibly new levels of capacity for how much nourishing breath we can take in. So this is the start of the pattern is breathing consciously in and out through the mouth into your lower belly and expanding your lower belly to its full capacity. And over time, that capacity is going to grow. You're going to actually learn or reteach your body how to take advantage of the amazing space that we actually have to take deep breaths <laughs> in our belly, right? And many of you have heard of the power of like, take three deep breaths, right? And I actually encourage, encourage a lot of my clients to do this, right? Pause before you eat and really just take those three deep breaths to calm your system. And those breaths are usually into the belly because this belly breath calms our nervous system. Pretty simple. So the style again is a looped breath. So this, is, this means you're breathing in and out of your mouth without any pause between inhale and exhale. One of the things you will also notice as soon as you start paying attention to your breath on a daily basis is that you pause between your inhale and exhales. We pause at the top and we usually pause at the bottom. And when we engage in a conscious connected breathwork practice, you are very consciously making sure your breath is looped. So there is no pause. And this oxygenation and this style of the, the breath control that you're doing is actually what helps you reach your theta brainwave state. So there's a lot more to the technicalities and, and why, you know, you would work with a practitioner or be guided by somebody who knows how to cue you into the right style of breath. I'm just giving you the like really quick <laughs> synopsis of it right now. Uh, but that's essentially the pattern. You are laying flat on your back um, so that your throat can be really open. Your jaw is relaxed. You're beginning to breathe slow and full. It's not about hyperventilating. You're really, especially in the beginning of a journey, going slow as you learn to to create this rhythm in your body and learn the new pattern. Now, many of you are wondering now, if you've never tried this before, like, well, well, what can I expect? What can I expect in a journey? Right. And like, what might happen? Right. And that's our ego, right? We want to know what's going to happen. We want to know what it looks like, what exactly is going to unfold for us. And it's funny because you can expect the opposite of whatever you expect. <laughs> We can't have expectations going into a breathwork journey or any of these healing modalities because those expectations block what our body actually needs. So we can't have expectations and there is no normal. I'm already having clients ask me like, is this normal? Like my hand did this weird thing or I felt energy over here. Like, is this normal? There is no normal in conscious connected breathwork. When we tap into our body, 
everything that unfolds or comes forward, whether it's sound or movement or, um, you know, vibrations is a trust and surrender into what the body is needing in this moment. So this is really an act of surrender, an act of learning how to fully trust that your body is bringing forward what it's ready to process, what it's ready to share with you. And that may be physical symptoms. It may be emotions. It's a lot of things. Now, the actual journey itself is usually about an hour to 90 minutes. So this is not a short practice. This is definitely a journey to help. And the, ultimately, the longer that you engage in this pattern, the, the deeper you can go. And the journey really starts, um, this was helpful for me to know, so I want to pass it off to all of you, uh, starts really slow. You're really getting your baseline, um, baseline breath right? You're starting to develop the pattern, build this relationship with your breath, starting to deepen the, um, the volume in, in which you are breathing. So you're starting really slow. There's music. Uh, it's a massive part of this journey. Music is so, uh, so healing. And as you go, we're sort of following a bell curve. So as you go, the music will speed up and you will be guided if your facilitator is doing this correctly to slowly start expanding and contracting the breath a little bit quicker and a little bit fuller. You're going to be really reaching full capacity and volume of breath. And at one point in the journey, you will also begin bringing your breath into your chest. So you're going to breathe into your belly and then your chest. And as we do that, we begin consciously activating your nervous system. So at the peak of this experience is when a lot of the cathartic releases can happen. This is where we can really tap into some beautiful processing around anger, around sadness, around grief, around like just anything that needs to come out. There may be shaking, there may be screaming, there may be um, other movements that, that want to unfold here. And this is really where we get into supporting the body and the nervous system of letting go of the shit that it's holding on to. It's a really, really can be a really powerful experience. And after that, we start to re-regulate our nervous system again. So we are consciously sort of activating our nervous system, possibly even going back into some of these trauma states. And then at the second half of the journey, we bring that back down again. So you learn and teach yourself how to actually regulate your nervous system after perhaps an impact or an event has happened. And we learn how to, to bring that, to, to put that aside <clears throat> to re-regulate and to come back into a new level and understanding of rest in your nervous system. So if we're doing this correctly, your nervous system will be at a deeper state of rest and relaxation than when you started. Similar to the end of a yoga class where you'll end in Shavasana and the intention there is to fully surrender and drop into a new state of rest and relaxation. So these are kind of the, the, the quick notes of roughly what a journey looks like. Again, every guide is going to kind of have a different technique. There's also different schools and different ways that people teach conscious connected breath work. But again, some of the things that may show up for you, right, is there's no normal. There's no normal. Everything is wonderful. Everything is fully trusted that your body is, is doing what it needs to do. But some of the things that can absolutely show up are emotion you know, tears, uh, anger, um, beautiful opportunities to build a relationship with these sacred emotions, movement, sound, right? We talked about the somatic tools there. Um, there can also be possibly an opening to source energy. You may actually have uh, energetic uh, knowings or visions of even past lives or of um, past, you know, ancestral pieces as well. So we you can get quite spiritual as well and, and a little bit woo-woo with this and connecting with this energy of oneness. You may also feel sensations in your body. There may be tightness in places. There may be tingling. There may be energy moving in places that um, you have never felt it before. Or there may be pain that shows up in your ankle, right? There may be these, these symptoms that pop up as ways for your body to release the, the energy that it's been storing. So a couple things that can show up and there's so much more that can absolutely be present here for you with this type of modality. And until you actually experience it yourself, it's really hard for me to put into words. So I hope that this is just giving you enough of a baseline for you to feel confident enough to try it, to explore this modality as possibly a really important piece of your healing toolkit. Now, if I haven't already made it clear, 
this is deeply tied into how we can support ourselves in healing our addictions with food. So as I mentioned earlier, right, like how does conscious connected breath work? How can this even help us um, renegotiate our addictive patterns with sugar and with food? Because ultimately what we can do in with this breath work, as I've mentioned a few times already, is go in and renegotiate the trauma patterns that are stored in our nervous system that are ultimately driving us to feel unsafe in our bodies and in our emotions. And when we feel unsafe in our body, in our emotions, when we feel like we are worthless and we're unlovable and all this baggage that we carry, we will continue to engage in addictive behaviors. So until we heal by clearing out and repatterning, re-regulating our nervous system, we will forever be in this escapism drive towards whatever addictive substance you want to name. Even if Netflix, Instagram, the numbing out that we do in our lives, most of you listening to this podcast, that's sugar, but it could also be Netflix and Instagram and staying busy all the time. Anything that is keeping you out of your body and in your head is an addictive coping mechanism. It is a, a coping mechanism that you developed as a child. So we can use conscious connected breath work to renegotiate that connection again with your body that you have lost. We can start to build relationships with your emotions and actually release emotional baggage that you have probably been carrying your whole life. And this in itself is such a potent and powerful tool in your sugar freedom toolbox, because until you're willing to actually face your emotions and learn how to honor and process and feel what needs to be felt in a safe way, you will forever be reaching for sugar to escape difficult emotions. So you must rebuild and repair this relationship with your emotions and learn how to process them and integrate them. Breathwork being an amazing tool to do that. You can begin to connect with your true self, to reconnect with your body. I mean, all of these things that I just mentioned tie so deeply into healing the root causes that I'm talking about constantly here on this podcast that are at play keeping you hooked on sugar. So needless to say, this is a powerful modality and it's not one to be taken lightly. It's not one that is easy, right? But it is really accessible and really powerful. And I'm so grateful for the, the amazing humans out there in the world, spreading the message, practicing and, and training others like me to become facilitators in this modality, because I think it's, it's just endless, the potential and the possibility that we have when we tap into the power of our breath in this way. And this is why breath work is a major piece of what we are going to be engaging in together at my upcoming Sugar Freedom Embodiment Retreat this June. My teachers are actually coming to host a breathwork journey for our group among exploring many other deep somatic tools and processes and workshops where we're going to be tapping into the wisdom of your body and helping you actually heal at the root of these coping mechanisms so that food is no longer something that you feel like you need to get through your difficult days. We're going to be doing this work together in person over five glorious days, Oceanside, here outside of Vancouver, BC. And I'm so deeply excited by the women who have already said yes to join us. We have a small, intimate group of no more than 10 women at this upcoming retreat. And there are still a few spots left. So if this is something that you are interested in, uh, diving into breath work, diving into somatic work, diving into your five-day sugar detox and reconnecting with nourishing foods and deeply connecting with your lifelong Sugar Freedom Sisters, that you will have these connections forever after the deep work that we're going to do together. So if you're interested at all, come and check out all the details over on my website, danielledame.com slash retreat, or you can obviously find the link in the show notes below. Come and check it out. We'd love to have you join us. All right. As we wrap things up here, I hope that you are feeling inspired to try this modality. And you may be wondering, like, how do I even get started? How do I try this modality? So depending on where you live in the world, you know, I encourage you to maybe even hit Google, right? Research around and see in your area, maybe checking Facebook groups or uh, Eventbrite, uh, different areas 
where you live, there may very well be somebody hosting breathwork circles, hosting groups, or hosting one-on-one. I encourage you to look into that because in-person is definitely going to be a much more powerful experience. And if you don't have anyone in your area, you can absolutely reach out to me, uh, book a session with me. I am starting to take clients now, which has been incredible to even do this practice virtually is still so healing. And of course, come and join the upcoming retreat. If you want to do this in person with me and with my breathwork teachers, then come and join us at the Sugar Freedom Embodiment Retreat. And however you navigate your way into this modality and this journey, I deeply hope that you fall in love with it in the way that I did and that it nourishes you and supports you in all the ways that you need in this phase of your journey with healing yourself and healing food with food. So thank you all. Thank you deeply for letting me share this with you. Thank you deeply for listening to another episode. This has been amazing. I'm so excited to continue bringing more of this content and these deeper dive conversations and modalities here to you on the podcast. And again, final reminder, if you could take a moment to please leave a five-star review, it helps me reach so much more uh, women who really need this, this message and really need the support in their journey with sugar. Thank you deeply for being here. And I'm so excited. I'll see you all on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. If you're loving what we talked about today, please remember to subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with someone you love. And if you're ready to dive deeper into discovering your root causes and patterns that are keeping you hooked on sugar, be sure to check out our brand new free workshop series that will help you kick emotional eating for good. Find the link to download this free series and other amazing resources in the show notes below.